Let's review the journal entries for the purchases of inventory under the perpetual method. On March 2nd, East Company sold 900,000 in merchandise to West Company, terms 210 net 30. Now we are doing the purchasing side of the journal entries, so we are West Company here and we're doing our journal entries from the perspective of West Company. So from West Company's perspective, they are purchasing $900,000 worth of merchandise. So on March 2nd, they would debit inventory for $900,000 and credit accounts payable for $900,000. Inventory is an asset account, so we're increasing our asset here with a debit and we're increasing accounts payable with a credit. Next, on March 6th, West Company returned $90,000 of the merchandise that they purchased on the 2nd. So where you're returning merchandise, maybe it was defective, Maybe they accidentally ordered the wrong amount. It doesn't really matter. The accounting is the same, whether it's a purchase return or what we call a purchase allowance. What we're going to do is we're going to decrease accounts payable by the 90000 because we're not going to pay for something we returned. And then we have to decrease our inventory account because we no longer are holding that $90,000 worth of inventory. And so if we look at our accounts, we originally purchased $900,000 worth of inventory and owed 900000 and now it's been reduced by the 90000 return, and so our inventory balance is currently 810000 and the amount we owe in accounts payable is also 810000 On March 12th, East Company received the balance due from West Company. So the first thing we need to do is we need to check whether or not we are within the discount period. Okay, and so in order to do this, we need to go back and look at our original journal entry for when the items were sold to West Company. So let's review it. On March 2nd is when we made that original purchase, and we can see that our terms are 210 net 30. 210 means that if we pay within 10 days, we get a 2% discount. Otherwise, the net amount is due in 30 days. So March 2nd to March 12th, that counts as 10 days. So yes, we are within the discount period. And the discount that is applied is on the amount that is owed. And so right now we only owe $810,000. And so that would result in a $16,200 discount that West Company is going to receive for paying within those 10 days. So the journal entry then that we would record on March 12th is a debit to accounts payable for the full $810,000 because we're paying off the entire bill but we're actually going to reduce our inventory by the $16,200, the amount of the discount. And then the cash they pay is the total amount owed, less the discount, which comes out to the $793,800. So we are paying off the entire bill of accounts payable, so we have to debit the whole thing, but that discount actually gets applied as a reduction to our inventory account. So after this transaction on March 12th, our inventory balance goes down by the $16,200, our accounts payable goes down by the full $810, and you can see then that the ending balance in accounts payable is a zero, and the ending balance in the inventory account matches what we actually paid for that inventory. The goal under the perpetual method for purchases of inventory is to track how much it actually costs you to obtain that inventory. So to review, inventory is an asset. Those are the goods that you're acquiring to sell at a later point in time. We have purchase returns and purchase allowances. Both of them result in a reduction to that inventory asset at the time of the return or allowance. And then if you have a purchase discount for paying within those discounted payment terms, that also reduces the inventory asset. So all of these transactions are impacting that asset of inventory.